I'll post the questions after the chat as well. Everyone should see my screen. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about Cypress IO tips entry. Oh, that's a wrong title. Let me fix that. <laughs> no project planning. That's automated testing. OK, that's better. We didn't see anything. No, because I can cut it. There you go. Today, I'm going to be talking about Cypress IO. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. OK, do let me know if you lose the visual audio. And I'll switch off the video if it's not working. So quickly, my name is Vladimir. Um, I'm an architect and Drupal developer. And I'm passionate about a number of open source tools that I contribute to, including GitLab and Drupal. So today, we're going to talk about browser testing. So because of the number of people, I'll just do a gentle introduction to what browser testing is, what sort of technologies we have available as Drupal developers or any other developers, what Cypress IO is, why is it the same as some technologies and where it's different, and we'll attempt to write the test. So let's do that. So first. Uh, when you Google Cypress IO, the first thing uh, is uh, popping up. It's a test craft. In fact, they are marketing as a Cypress IO alternative. So if you use test craft before, uh, you might want to add something in the end because I never used it. That's the only time I saw test uh, craft IO. But again, that's the first alternative that I actually saw when I was um, talking, uh, trying to find some information about Cypress IO. Uh, probably most of you who work with Drupal know BHAT. So it's a behavioral driven uh, framework for PHP. Uh, and you can, uh, and when we talk about behavior, we talk about the user. So the user doesn't see your tags. The user doesn't see your code. All users see is the browser window. They go to some page and then they click around. So, um, uh, yeah, so, and that's exactly what we had was doing. And it's uh, written in PHP and you can write tests in PHP. So I think it, uh, Drupal 8.6 was released. Uh, Nightwatch JS was added uh, as a testing framework. So the difference between this testing framework and we had that this one is actually completely written is in uh, JavaScript. You do need to do npm install Nightwatch. And uh, then, as you can see here on my screen, uh, you write some um, JavaScript. And that's what you test. And uh, again, this on this website, you can see it's called end-to-end -end testing. But behavior-driven testing, end-to-end testing, it's all the same thing. Uh, and it tests basically what user does. So if we qu quickly look through this example, it says a browser, go to this particular URL. Uh, wait for body, uh, make sure the title contains that text, and so on and so forth. So you're actually testing the user experience rather than the functionality, as opposed to unit tests, which um, test nuts and bolts of the actually the uh, infrastructure of your code. Here, you're actually testing the end result with users see. And once you go to a Cypress homepage, it says the web has evolved. Finally, the testing has to. And it's been true. It's been quite tricky and cumbersome, if, especially if you're not a developer, to, um, uh, to set up the testing framework, actually write for testing framework. Again, because usually if you write co code or test for testing framework, in probably 95%, you are a developer. So uh, with the Cypress, I found it's quite interesting because I use Nightwatch for maybe four or five years now. I did a couple of presentations on Nightwatch, and it was interesting to see how the thing evolved, then kind of stopped for a bit, and now it's uh, picking up the interest again. Uh, so Cy I heard about Cypress here and there. I saw the presentation at the meetup recently, the JavaScript meetup, and I decided to give it a go and see if it's different or if it's the same. Like, do we actually need it? Do we even bother to go and um, do it? So I did npm install, and it uh, installed uh, quite quickly. Although I heard some people were complaining that one of the downfalls that it downloads a lot of stuff. 
uh, could be. I didn't have any issues with that. So npm install Cypress, it downloaded Cypress, and zip Cypress, and finish installation. So when it's finished installation, it's quite interesting. It actually downloaded the app. So it looks at the operating system and downloads the app as well. We're going to do that. So I did that early, uh, late last week. And you can see there is, uh, it's quite up to date. There is zero, zero vulnerabilities. And uh, is there zero vulnerabilities. And yeah, so the it installed nice and quick. So on the website, they say, you know, it um, does two things. It's installed the Cypress test runner and you can write tests locally. And it also, uh, you can build the uh, suite of CI tests running for your continuous integration somewhere in the CI as well. You can record them and gain a powerful insight. So just to compare uh, with the Nightwatch, for Nightwatch, if you install it plainly on your machine without any um, virtual machine or anything, you need to install a lot of tools. You need to install a browser plugin, so browser runners, you need to install Selenium, connect them, and then try uh, uh, Nightwatch to run it. Uh, there are images available uh, for uh, Selenium to do that but it took quite a while. So the whole setup process was very, very complex. Uh, this one was actually, I didn't need to install anything and it ran pretty much straight away, which was different from any other framework I uh, work with. So a few other things uh, that they mentioned is they're open source. So they're available on GitHub and you can go and help them to develop the tool. It's developer friendly. Uh, it's they claim it made specifically for developers and QA engineers, but I think all the testing tools was developed for those people. But I would like to see the tool that actually makes, you know, breaking the ground to the less technical markets and uh, build from ground up so you can actually go and uh, research the architecture. Again, uh, the whole code for this thing is in um, GitHub. And go and check it out. Uh, it's interesting to see the version. So the tagging of the versions, they do release every two weeks or so, which is quite interesting. So the version uh, four was released on 7th of February. And since then, every two weeks, there is a release. So they, um, yeah, they actually um, quite up to date on uh, releasing the version. So sometimes you can see frameworks become popular and stop. As I mentioned before, that happened to Nightwatch.js. And uh, the release notes are quite comprehensive. So you can go and read what actually happened and uh, which functions they have. Same as documentation. So um, as I mentioned before, it does have an app. So apart from the installing all the code, it uh, downloads for my Mac OS, it downloaded Mac OS app. And uh, it does the same for Linux and does the same for Windows, which is quite interesting, I found. And it does uh, help quite a bit, especially for people who never run tests before. So, uh, and also the another thing, once you run the Cypress open, uh, it opens this app and the app downloads the basic code. And it has a lot of examples here. So you can actually go and check out the examples. And for the testing, I found that examples are crucial because so rather than you sitting there uh, spending your time on uh, GitHub comments on Stack Overflow, the good examples really do make difference, especially when you're writing tests. We all know that the uh, stakeholders or clients don't really like to pay for the tests. They think them as an extra. So if you check few of the testing and actually show them that it works, uh, they might be a bit more uh, prone to actually pay you for the tests or actually uh, make sure that you do test the release. So uh, I found there are quite a few good examples that you can actually quickly put together without spending a lot of time and show your client. I mean, for the organizations who run test-driven development, it's not an issue. But if you're just starting or if you're building a small website, it's quite complicated. You need to invest a significant amount of time to um, build the first test. So, and that's how it looks. So you basically, in this app, you go click on a test and it runs the test. So, um, and all, the, different, the different thing with Cypress is it opens the browser you select 
it has a selection between Firefox and Chrome, and you have the whole log on the left-hand side, and it actually saves the history. And it also records the video. So you don't need to set up anything. It already does that. In fact, if you don't want to record video, you have to say, don't record the video. Uh, yeah. And uh, it also, just the last thing, uh, last plug before we go into live demo example is it does have a ESLint plugin. So for people who is doing JavaScript linting or ESLinting, so it's uh, they also provide ESLint plugin. So it does look nice and dandy. Uh, although the uh, standards do differ from Drupal quite a bit. All right, let's do a live demo. So as I mentioned before, okay, so let me know if the text is not big enough. That should do it. So I just had a, a package.json, and uh, the only dependencies I have is this ESLint plugin and the Cypress itself. So if you go and PM install Cypress, it's going to do that. Well, I already installed that. The next thing you run is Cypress open. If you didn't run Cypress open before, it's going to verify the app for um, uh, Mac, in my case. Uh, I'm going to do that. And do npm run sci open. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to test today. So while it's opening, doing that, uh, what we're going to test is uh, it's going to be okay. So this is the app, and it's open, and uh, you can see there are a number of examples here. Uh, so you can go and search for particular examples here, yeah, it's quite nice. So we'll open the first one called Action, click on it. It opens the Chrome. And this is the interface. So it actually runs the test on the left-hand side. And you can see the test uh, going one by one and what it does. You can see the timer, how many tests pass, how many tests fail. And it goes it to, and test actually example the cypress.io and you can see it goes through each test so this is one cool thing that i haven't seen before with the testing frameworks i mean we all visual people if we'll spend a lot of time in the code but the good another cool thing is so once each um test uh ran you can actually open it up and go back in the history so you can see uh which particular DOM element was selected. Uh, each particular DOM element was selected by uh, uh, this action. So we'll see the example with Drupal where the same, uh, I think we have a similar uh, same IDs on two buttons and it's gonna click the wrong button. In fact, now thinking it's the actually bug. So you can see where they type and click and so on and so forth. So you can actually visit the particular test and see what happened. So I thought that was pretty cool. OK, uh, let's quickly write a test then and do um, a Drupal test. So I installed Drupal 9. Uh, beta 2 is available. So if you uh, want to help test it, it's already there. OK, so let's draw. I installed Umami installation profile. Umami installation profile, it's uh, it's installation profile that's applied with Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 and just demonstrates the different features. So what we're going to do, we're going to go load this page, log in here, and try to uh, make sure user can see a login form and then click a login, providing their own credentials. So let's do that. OK, so to quickly write the test here, uh, I'll just copy one of the examples so it's easier. So inside Cypress, it downloads all the test examples that we saw. So inside Cypress integrations, I'll create a folder called Drupal 0. And inside there, I'll just uh, copy one of the 
files and do Drupal all again. So before anything happens, I'll just remove all the tasks so it doesn't look very easy. Okay, so now we have um, Drupal login test, which is a function. Again, if you're not familiar with a modern JavaScript uh, format, just uh, yeah, just take it. But that's what all the tests are written in. And what we're saying uh, here is before each test, Cypress visit particular page. Our page is, uh, URL is Drupal and zero u dot local. Now we are ready to write the test. To write test is easy. You just write it. Then actually description of what's happening. Go to login page. No parameters, and you just write. Okay. Oh, here you go. So we have an empty. We have an empty test. Go to login page. So now, if we go back to our app, if we go back to our app, you can see the test is already there. So if we click on it and see what's going to happen. Uh, so it tries to go to this triple page and that's it. So it visited the page and go to login page. As you can see, when we uh, open it up, it just visits the page and that's it. So do that. So the next thing we do is uh, we'll try to uh, write something. So I'll put something like cypress.log. That's in login in functionality. We'll test that. Uh, it's, it would actually automatically retest. So it does watch. So you can see it here. It logged testing login functionality. So just as a log. So the next thing we do, we actually, uh, let's click on login. And to do that, we'll just um, to log in in the top corner. So if we look at our page, it started. So if we look at our page, there is a login. Uh, we'll try to click on this particular thing. And in Cypress, it's quite easy. You just say, Sci contains. will deliberately misspell login and try to do click. Okay. So let's see what our test does. And we can see our first error. So contains login, timeout retry and expected to find content login, but never did. And now we'll put the space that we expect And you can see we're already on login page, the test pass. So all assertions fail. And we can go back in time and say, OK, we went to the page. We output something. We found the element that contains login in. And then we did click. OK, that was quite successful. So we can check a couple of things on the next page. So for example, here, text contains and make sure we'll find some text. So for example, here, enter your umami 9.0 username. That's how we call our website. So let's say it's a good line to test. So we'll just test contains. Yep. So it's already passed. Well, we're switching between the browsers and it found it. And you can see uh, once I hover over it, you actually see it went to the element we wanted to, so there is no incorrect selection. 
Okay, uh, that actually, that command is equals to, uh, you know, your moco chai kind of notation where you say should, and then you say uh, for this particular case, be visible. So that would give us the same result. So we know there is a net, there might be an error that is invisible at the moment. So we can actually test the error that is, uh, that the error is invisible. So it, here's our example. We do fake at fake.com. Someone's coming in. Okay, so, and we'll wait for the error message. And the error message actually says unrecognized username and password. From here, we go back to our test and we say unrecognized username and password. Not be visible. Okay. So that sh should succeed. And it's already did. So it says unrecognized username password is visible if we'll keep it, uh, is not visible if we'll keep it visible. We're we'll obviously going to fail the test. There we go. Exactly as we wanted. So it couldn't find. So a few things uh, we wanted to do is actually fill in with a fake name, fake password, and see if this error message appears. So for this case, now, now it's not a text. It's the actual element. So here, what we can do, we can go and say Cypress get in Drupal in this particular theme. Uh, we can actually use uh, CSS DOM element. So here, edit name. And then we say type, type, and we'll type fake at email.com. And that will type in our name, and we'll type fake password to edit us. So now uh, let's go and see if it's going to do that. Oh, we still have visible error. We'll try that. So you can see it actually filled in. I can go and trace how it clicks through and navigate. And the last thing we're going to do is go and click the button. So for that, we'll just do a click command. And I know the button uh, ID is edit submit. And let's see what's going to happen. So it goes, clicks edit submit, and it says, please enter some keywords. So obviously, uh, it in fact, here it did fail, but it did fail our test. Because if you look at where we clicked, we actually clicked at um, search uh, button. Because for some reason, it has the same ID called edit submit. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but I thought two uh, uh, HTML elements could not have the same ID. So that's what I found while I was preparing for this presentation. So two things to do. So to actually fail the test, we need to make sure that this fail error is visible. So that's actually going to fail our test, as last time it didn't. So it would wait, click on the search button, and then actually give us an error. So that would fail our test. And the last thing is actually click on the correct edit submit button. So if we look at which form it belongs to. And it sits in the form, this class user login form. So if we'll use that, hopefully it works. And it did. So now it clicked. on the correct button. So I can close down this app. Actually, before I do that, I just quickly navigating through the app to show you um, a couple of 
features. So as I mentioned before, we were testing everything in uh, Chrome. It also has a beta for Firefox. And you can, if you're testing your web app inside the mobile app, you can also test uh, Electron here. There is other features, but I'll just leave it for you. So the idea was to actually show you what it is and why is it different from the other testing frameworks. So let's wrap it up. Here is my presentation. Okay, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and I'll read them. Once I finish. Okay, so quickly to wrap it up. So we actually look at the what browser testing is. It's something that you actually resemble a user uh, uh, commands and user operations rather than what application does. Uh, we look at the different technologies, one already included with a uh, Drupal or something very near Drupal like uh, Behat or a Nightwatch. We'll look at the Cypress OO itself and so how is it different than we wrote our first test with trying to log in and so some interesting things. So I will post the links for that and there is more there is an interesting uh, presentation called Cypress best practices if you want to dig a bit more deeper into the Cypress API and do we have any questions hey Bola you yeah I quickly have a question for you uh, hey Ricky yeah yeah that's the does the Cypress can test the sort of UI elements for example like uh, when you go to this login page your H2 supposed to be, you know, like uh, 18 pixels or something like that? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Uh, it does, though, Im it does uh, embed stuff like jQuery. So if you can test it with jQuery, if jQuery can return you the real size of the, uh, if jQuery can return you the real size or the current size of the button, uh, then you will yeah. be able to do that. Yeah, because the most of the tests are failing from like UI perspective, like in, in, in practical cases, like when we design, it comes like, okay, this, this title is off by this much, that sort of stuff. We try to no. automate that, that to be great, yeah. Mm, I found uh, with the content, it's very hard because it's not always depend on you. It sometimes depend on the client. And sometimes yeah. uh, sometime client gives you a design with a specific length in mind, but then they go and actually um, change change it. Yeah. Uh, so they, uh, for example, they design a page where the title is supposed to be two lines, but then they go and put the title over oh, three lines. Uh, yeah, that's true. So yeah, it's a, it's a balance between the proper content editing and testing. I'm not sure if testing is always the right answer here because sometimes client would go and say, yes, in majority of the cases it is, but in this particular case, I want to put this big title and I had it a few times. So I was like, well, you know, the trade-off. Yep, cool. Mm. Thank you. Anything else? Plato, I had a question about uh, Cyprus and I guess, is there any set of standard Drupal tests uh, that you ah, can start with rather than having a, to reinvent the wheel? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, we already wrote one that can be a, a good test, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, I did a number of them for uh, Nightwatch and then actually Nightwatch was embedded in Drupal. There was extra tests as well. So if there is none, it's probably a good project to do something like that. Okay, cool. Uh, for people who know much more about accessibility than I am, is that actually a bug if two elements have the same ID on the page? Yep, I believe it is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's an issue. 
Okay, so if anyone wants to raise that, I'm not sure. Like it's a search block and a login block on the same page. So um, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, Drupal has a function that is meant to generate a unique ID for them. That's what I that's what I thought because yeah, it would uh, IDs would be unique, but in this particular case, uh, I was writing tests without trying to fail it, and it clicked on the search button. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if it's a structural thing, like one's in a block and one's in a, yeah, I don't know. One, one in a content block and one in the yeah, search block. But yeah, that's something to investigate. I literally found it like two hours ago. Mm -hmm. Is it happening over in Omami? Uh, uh, I didn't test the normal thing, but that happened in Umami login page, yes. So if you install Umami, that's Drupal 9, but I assume the same thing gonna happen in Drupal 8. Click login, um, yeah, two buttons with the same ID. Mm. Uh, anyone else? Test for Drupal. Yeah, I'll check it out if there is test for Drupal because Cypress was around for a while. I heard about it for a while. I just never had a time to look at it. Quick well, question. yep. Will you use uh, Cypress over Nightwatch moving forward? Uh, it definitely looks like the case uh, because it allowed me to do in a very short amount of time much more than uh, Nightwatch does. I wouldn't say Nightwatch is worse. And especially if you have uh, Nightwatch suite, keep using it. It's getting better, especially once they hit version one. I am not going to drop my existing Nightwatch test. I had a few clients. I'm not going to rewrite them in Cypress, that's for sure. In fact, I actually want to see where both technologies are going. I think uh, Nightwatch guys were busy. They are Swedish-based company, and they were busy building the Nightwatch cloud to basically make some money. Uh, so it would be interesting once the cloud is launched. It would be interesting if they focus back on the framework and try to get uh, catch up to Cypress. But it looks like a lot of big companies already picked up the Cypress. So there is this momentum that might give Cypress a big push. But it's a, it's just an alternative that I heard for a while. I just never had the time to look at it. So I'm just fascinated with how different it is and, um, you know, all inclusive, including the app, which you would think is not very, uh, you know, useful until you use it. So a couple more questions. David, I wonder if Cypress has any methodology for keeping the test in sync with complex changes throughout the application. So it's if you write a good, if you wrote a suit with a Nightwatch, eventually you would start pushing something um, into configuration. That's what I did, including the function. So I created like Drupal 8 login function, which would just, you pass username, password, and it would go and log into Drupal and do a lot of these small things or navigate through Drupal. But navigation was interesting because you would define menu within your theme. So it would be different for each project, whereas Drupal login would be the same. And yeah, so eventually you would create, a, I guess, practices or suites so you can quickly rename stuff in case, for example, in two years you decide to create a new theme. Uh, otherwise, it's all manual uh, uh, search and replace. So that's... Yeah. Bit of a habit thing then that you, you pretty much just have to remember to make the changes in both places yep uh it's all about discipline in this case so actually structuring your dom to the point where you can easily rename it either it's through configuration of variables or functions like global functions configuration functions whatever they are okay uh, any, uh, okay, just, uh, thank you. okay, so there is a link for Cypress IO API commands. Shoot. Can you Cypress to audit the site? Uh, what do I mean by audit? Uh, what sort of content does it have? White? Do you have any more insight into the question? Uh, well, well, like my, my problem with that frame, I could run it over my title site and then find all the broken pages, I suppose. That's that sort of thing. I yeah, pass pass on my HTML and find what's missing. I don't know. I think you can do what they don't allow you to do. So yeah, there is a section called uh, 
uh, methodology or limitation, something like that in the documentation. It's quite interesting. So they won't allow you to uh, do like data scraping. So you can scrape the data, but in the same test, they won't allow you to go to another URL. So let's say you're trying to, you know, uh, scrape the website data for something particular that is not directly loaded. So you cannot just go curl and get the HTML. You need the browser like that to wait until the data is loaded and then copy paste it. Uh, so they won't allow you in the same test to go to the different URL if you're already on one URL. Uh, so there are there is a whole page about those limitations and why are they there. It's actually one URL, so so, but um, but yeah, I think so. It, it forms its own DOM and it tests within itself, yeah. So it's like a little browser going to your site, is it? It's like a little JavaScript browser. So what the point of it is? Uh, we, which one? Your 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 JavaScript uh, library is uh, opening your site or your page and finding it's you know goes to login like, mm. like a browser in a sense, isn't it? It's not it's it's not Firefox. It's its own JavaScript browser, isn't it? No, no, it's using, so I was using uh, Chrome. So uh, we're talking about a few things here. So once we type uh, Cypress open, it opens the app. So this is a binary. They open it. And there is a binary for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So this, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I, st I still present it, right? Yes. So this one, it's an app. It is actually an app. It's a binary. You um, do that. And uh, inside it, once you click on it, it launches the uh, it launches the browser you, you chose. So either be Firefox, Electron, or Chrome. Does that make sense or answer your question? Yeah, so, so OK, that's, it's, more, it's like a little bot, and it talks to your browser, and then, yeah. It, it sees what it does. Okay. That that's right. That's right. Yep. So this one, well, I, once I click on the test, next thing is actually a Chrome in uh, uh, incognito mode, and it says here Chrome is being controlled by automated software. So in case you write something nasty, and it pops up on people's screen, Chrome should declare that. And inside here, it has. It's actually it has its own browser, so it's like a browser within a browser, which you can stop, pause, go in time. But the interesting thing you can, because it's a still a browser, you can still use something like development tools on it. And uh, yep, so they open on the right hand side. So this is Chrome, but uh, you can also launch Firefox or Electron. But they all control within this app. So it's like an enriched browser. You know, with your it's like this tool, it adds on that, top of the browser, yeah. Yeah, it's a browser within a browser, yes. In this, that, that makes more what it's doing there, of course, mm. it's a bit strange, you know. So, okay, okay, yep. But it basically, yeah, loads your page, whatever you specify, and then just adds an extra development tools on the left and saving your history what you did. As I mentioned before, it also saves the video unless you specifically say in configuration that do not save the video. 